Hi everybody. We want to continue from where we finished off from the cost of capital. The cost of capital is essentially the required return from providers of capital and it depends on how the business is financed. So for an all equity financed business, we say the cost of capital will essentially be its cost of equity capital, often called the ungeared cost of equity, which could represent by KEU. And there are two possible means by which we can arrive at this. And under the capital asset pricing model, or under the Modiglani and Miller model. And these formulas are provided in the examination. So on the formula sheet, these are the bits for the Modiglani and Miller bit there. You can find that there. And then under the capital asset pricing model, that is the formula to pick out for this. Now, it also means that where the business is financed by both debt and equity, then we have some proportion of debt, some proportion of equity, and so then we call it weighted average cost of capital, weighted by the respective proportions of debt and equity in the capital structure. So, as we looked at, again, that is the work formula. And this formula, again, is given or provided in the exam, as you can see from here. So that is your work formula, which, when used, is assumed that a company is financed by both debt and equity capital. Now, with the work, we will be looking at first finding how to find the cost of equity capital. So your starting point for working out the work is work out your cost of equity capital. Go secondly to work out your cost of ungeared, um, sorry, the cost of debt capital. And then the third thing you'll be looking at is the market values, which will become the basis of weighing up the respective proportions of debt and equity in the capital structure. Again, three possible sources, the capital asset pricing model as mentioned, and the Modiglani. And then we could also get the dividend valuation model, even though it doesn't come up often as a means of obtaining the cost of equity capital in AFM question. But then it is a possibility. Then. The second bit, like we said earlier on, to find is finding the yield to maturity, which is the pre-tax cost of debt. And as we saw, we could find that through the risk free rate plus the credit spread, or finding the IRR of pre-tax cash flows, or you could find this through the capital asset pricing model but then the beta we'll be talking about will be the beta of debt, where I'll be taking a moment shortly to explain the various types of uh, beta. Then the third thing we'll be looking at is the market values. Now, with the market values, market value of equity essentially is number of shares times the share price but then it could be or you could be made to find that from first principle as per one past question called coeding um, where we had to find that as the present value of future free cash flows to equity discounted at the cost of equity capital and then the market value of debt is the market value of a unit of debt divided by the face value per unit, all multiplied by the total book value stated in the statement of financial position. Or from first principles, again, as encoding, um, the market value 
is determined by the present value of future interest and capital uh, redemption discounted at the yield to maturity. And then the market value for bank loans, because are not traded, will essentially be equal to the bank loans. And then also, before we move on, if we need to find the cost of a bank loan, for a bank loan, it will be assumed as a floating debt. And so, if it has a rate of R, say R percent, then the cost of that bank loan after tax will essentially be that rate into 1 minus T. So, for example, if the rate is 5%, then that cost will be that 5% into 1 minus whatever tax rate is given. So, for bank loans, they will be assumed to be um, a floating debt. All right. Now, when we have done all of that, then we push them into the weighted average cost of capital formula. Now, the use of WAC, as we mentioned earlier on, is underpinned by two main assumptions. That is, if we need to use the weighted average cost of capital as the basis of evaluating the financial acceptability of a project or viability of a project, then it's essential that that new project has the same or similar risk profile as our existing projects or businesses. Two, the historic proportions of debt and equity in our existing capital structure should not change. Why? The reason is our work formula, this bit of our work formula is our gearing by market values. So any form of funding for the new project must have the same proportions of debt and equity as existing projects for our existing work to be valid. And so where the project is going to be financed by different proportions of debt and equity, then we cannot be in the position to use our work. In that case, we'll be talking about APV shortly, where we will separate investment decision from financing decision. So for today's session, what we're essentially going to be doing is, what if we are investing in a new project or call it diversification, but then we wish to maintain our existing capital structure? Or what if by the method of funding the new project, our gearing will be altered. What do we do? So that is what brings us into today's um, topic. Now, a quick one on the review of a capital asset pricing model. We said total risk is a combination of unsystematic risk and systematic risk. And the unsystematic risk is the company specific risks, things like potential uh, breakdown of machinery, changes in management, things that are specific to an organization. And then we have the systematic risks, residual risks, due to or arising as a result of changes in macroeconomic factors, which we say they cannot be diversified by holding a, well, uh, a large portfolio of what investment. And so capital asset pricing model um, works on the assumption that every investor holds a well-diversified portfolio to the extent that it is in the position to um, dive, um, take out unsystematic risks. And so investors should only be rewarded for taking systematic risks. And so what we are looking at is then how do we measure this systematic risks? So an investor or a return or a company's um, 
retain sensitivity to changes in macroeconomic factors is the beta factor. So this quite, um, it's not a new thing. Um, I believe we all have heard of this uh, from FM earlier studies. But what I want us to be reminded of is if we have this as the um, capital, capital market line, for example, then for at zero risk, that is the risk free rate. And then we have the average market return. And the difference between the average market return and the risk free rate is what we refer to as the equity risk uh, premium. So the expected return on equity or cost of equity can generally be um, arrived at using risk free rate, equity risk premium times the beta. So this bit here is the equity risk um, premium. So where the examiner or the question gives you equity risk premium, then it means that the difference between RM and RF is already provided. Okay, so that is that on working at um, the work. Now, before we look at this, we want to look at the different types of betas and how they are related. So if we look at types of betas, we have asset beta. An asset beta, or call it ungeared beta. And this simply measures systematic business risk. Only systematic business risk. So it is often presented by, call it BA if you want. Okay, so we also have, so if that's the first one, we have equity beta. And of course, that will be the geared word. And this time, that will measure systematic, not just business, business and then financial um, risk. So where an organization is financed by both debt and equity, then it would essentially have an equity beta. All right. So the third type of beta we can have is the debt um, beta or beta of debt. And what does this measure? It measures um, the risk of defaulting on, on the debt issued. So the risk of default on the debt issued. Now, all these three are related by the asset beta formula Without going much into details or the um, rationale behind it, the asset uh, beta formula, um, let's be clear, this is provided um, in the exam. I'll be showing that to you shortly. So you look at that here, and I can see this to be this bit here clearly written in an asset beta formula. Now, with this formula, what it does is it says the relationship between all three is asset beta equals the equity beta multiplied by the market value of equity as a ratio to market value of debt after tax plus that plus beta of debt times the proportion of debt 
as a ratio to this. So be careful. It may look very similar to the work formula, but then it is not equal to the work formula. It's not the work formula at all. Now, why this formula? It means that where an organization has equity beta, that is, it faces both business risks and financial risks, and it wishes to ungear or degear. So let's just take this box here. For example, that if this is my asset um, beta, then I face business risk and no financial risk. But if I have equity beta, which is the BE, if you want, then I face business risk and financial risk. All right. So what does it mean? It means that if I have an equity beta and I wish to remove the financial risk from it, then I will need to use the asset beta formula to do what we call degearing or ungearing. And I hope that is fair. Now, we need these skills or these tools to be able to find an appropriate risk-adjusted cost of capital if we wish to diversify into a new area. But then, for example, we want to maintain our proportion of debt and equity in our capital structure. Now, the other bit is where debt is assumed risk-free. So meaning that the risk of default is non-existent, then it means that beta of debt is equal to zero. Now the second implication for this statement is that return on risk-free could be likened to yield to maturity or pre-tax cost of debt. That is the implication that it means that the risk, there's no risk of defaulting on debt. So then a company's debt is as good as government bonds. A bit, you know, not so practical, but then that statement means that where we are not giving the cost of borrowing, we could use risk free rate as a surrogate for uh, the pre tax cost of debt for the purposes of working out our weighted average cost of capital. Now, I believe by now we have an idea of where or what we are looking at going um, forward. So, shall we look at this example? This is the basic example. It says, there is a company, A, who operates in a supermarket space and is financed by 70% equity, 30% debt by market values, and then 50% equity and debt by book values. Of course, for the purposes of our cost of capital, we are not interested in book values unless we have no market values to use. Now, the company has an equity beta of um, 1.6. So then this is the existing equity beta, which measures business risks and financial risks of the company uh, operating in the supermarket chain. Now, they are looking at diversifying into real estate industry. But then the industry has my market values, a gearing of 40% debt to 60% equity and an equity beta of 1.4.
corporation tax rate yes is 30 percent risk free rate is that equity risk premium um which is essentially rm minus rf giving us this eight percent there and then we are told debt beta is zero now as we saw from previous one whenever this debt beta is zero then it essentially cancels out this bit of the formula so then the asset beta formula reduces to equity beta market value of equity market value of equity after tax market value of debt and that is because beta of debt is equal to zero or is assumed to be zero or debt is assumed to be risk free all right so what are we supposed to be doing here we are to calculate a suitable discount rate for the uh, proposed diversification into um, the real estate industry assuming that the company does not wish to alter its existing gearing meaning that the proportions of debt and equity will remain intact all right so if i just look at a diagram of what this question is trying to ask me to do then we could have something like there is business risks financial risks business risks financial risks so let's say this is a who is in the supermarket chain okay and then this is uh, the real estate industry now um what we need here is and um, we want to find out um what the statistics are this one says there's a beta equity of 1.6 there is a debt equity ratio of 30 percent debt as we can see 70 percent toward equity but you see these are different when we come here which is um, a debt equity ratio of um 40 percent debt and 60 percent um, equity so of course we have the tax rate to be 30 percent risk free rate to be six percent now on this occasion our risk free rate because we are told that beta of debt is zero can be likened to this but then having said that um, if you are giving the cost of borrowing or pre tax cost of borrowing it's important that you stick to it and use it this is just to make matters quite easy that is why um, i'm just using this kd to be that all because i'm told the beta of debt is zero then of course i have that as rm rf being equal to eight percent what are we trying to achieve here the first thing i want to look at is yes we are looking at diversifying so there is this diversification meaning the measure of business risks here is not the same as the business risks here. They are in completely different industries. But we are diversifying here, meaning that I need that business risks. I need that. The next thing I need to check is I want to maintain this capital structure because it says it does not waste to what? Alter is existing gearing so these are the two things i need to marry together to get a new beta equity so business risks in the real estate industry 
plus financial risks in the supermarket chain to create a new equity beta, which I will then need to work out my cost of um, capital or a risk adjusted cost of capital. Now, with this in mind, how do we start? Now, I've always said that we could work from the end, as in, what are we supposed to arrive at? We are looking at a weighted average cost of capital, where I will need the cost of equity, which I don't have, but then I'm told that they wish to maintain this gearing. So this is the measure of what? Financial risk, which they wish to maintain, meaning that 70% is expected here. And then after tax cost of borrowing, 60%, 30% tax rate gives us that. And then times the 30%. Now, to be honest, we have more than we need okay so you don't panic on these things this is the ultimate answer we are looking for and then we work out what do we need what do we have how do we find it so obviously this appears to be the only missing bit there so the fact that we are giving B test will mean that the capital asset pricing model will be the best thing to work with. So my cost of equity would be the risk fee rate, equity risk premium times a beta, um, a beta equity. Now, what do I have? Again, I have this to be six percent i have this given as um eight percent but then none of these beta equities would be appropriate for what i need why because for this it carries a business risk i don't need and this one 1.4 carries a financial risk I do not need so then what I've got to do is I'm going to ungear the equity beta in the real estate to arrive at the business risk measure and then regear it with the financial risks here so my starting point is one I'm going to ungear equity beta in the real estate business now so this is where the formula comes handy so the asset beta formula will now become the base arriving at this again because we are told that beta of debt is zero then we'll only be using the um just the other half of it so shall we i have asset beta asset beta will now be the equity beta in that industry which is 1.4 then market value of debt in that industry or equity sorry is 60 percent and then we have 60 percent 40 percent into after tax this because beta of debt is zero so essentially taking you back this is what i'm trying to use here this half formula beta asset being equal to beta equity for the one I wish to degear or ungear, measure of equity value by market value divided by that. So this is what it comes up to. So 
all these bits here is simply working out what this is and when we have done this well we should be arriving at 0 0.95 now what is this 0 0.95 now this 0 0.95 for to be fair what does it measure this simply measures the business risk in the real estate space so oh wow somehow we've managed to find this measure to be 0 0.954 so what we need to do is to now add on the financial risk of 3070 to bring us to what we actually need so um we don't need that we've taken that out and we have this so our second point or second step is we are going to regear to reflect the capital structure of a of of company a and that is 30% debt and then 70% equity by market values all right now one way to go about this is we could be using the same equation as asset beta so looking at this equation here now we have an asset beta so then that is 0 0.954 equal to a beta equity we don't know and then a new capital structure of 70 over 70 plus 30 after tax so either we make BE the subject or where we using have the formula, it might be handy to know that when it is rearranged by making when it's rearranged and we make beta equity the subject, then beta equity becomes asset beta and we sort of somersault the previous formula so this is what you get if you want to make beta equity the subject of the formula so that becomes very handy to work with we know this to be 0.954 and then we have um, 70 plus 30 after tax and over the 70 and that gives us 1.24 it will be interesting to know what this measures this time this measures the business risk in this um the real estate of course that's where we started from so in the real estate uh, business plus the financial risk or the gearing that we wish to maintain so hooray we are there 
this beta equity of 1.24 is what we have been looking out for here as 1.24. So this is what we set out that we needed this and we are going to find that through these two steps. And so we are now in the position to find the cost of geared equity. So this will be 6% plus the equity risk premium this time. So you notice that this 1.24 is so different from the 1.6, which was the original beta equity of company A, and then the 1.4, which related to that of uh, the telecom um, space. So we now have a new um, cost of what? equity capital, a new cost of equity. And if we work out this well, this should give us have six um, eight times one point two four actually says that plus six and we have fifteen point nine two percent. So we can now go back and have a look at um, what it means for our work. And I hope we are all following from this, what it means for our weighted average cost of capital. So this is where we, well, we now have this KE that we set out to look for. This KE that we set out to look for, we now know it is 15.92. Uh, um, so then, finally, having found this, so this will be our point number three. Then the fourth bit is we find the risk adjusted weighted average cost of capital, which gives us 15.94% um, multiplied by 70%, which is a gearing after task cost of debt times 30%. So this is where we are going. This is what we are looking for. And this should give us the overall risk adjusted cost of capital appropriate for um, appraising the expansion into the telecom space. So what you see that that was there, that was given, all that was given, all these ones were given. The only bit that we had to find was that bit there. And the rest is simply a straight jacket word. All right. So that is that bit there, how to find the risk adjusted cost of uh, capital. Now, typical of AFM, um, you could have a bit of complication not much of a complication but where an organization already operates in two separate industries then we could have the case of having an overall cost of capital reflecting um, risk from the different areas so let's just look at this um, um, basic example here which talks about a company 
which has 60% of its operations in the pharmaceutical industry and the remainder in the real estate business. Um, the company having an overall equity beta of 1.4, paying tax at 30% on its profit. And then we are told that the average gearing by market values of the company is 30% debt, 70% uh, equity. And then we are told that the real estate aspect of the business has an average um, gearing of 50% debt and then 60% um, uh, 50% debt, 50% uh, equity. So that is what we have there. But then there is no information relating to the gearing on um, the pharmaceutical business. And then um, equity beta of 1.2 also on the real estate business. So what we're trying to say is it has 60% of his business operating the pharmaceutical industry and then the other 40 percent so 40 percent in the real estate business but in the real estate business we have some information on the average equity beta there and then the average gearing 50 50 but we don't seem to have any information on the pharmaceutical industry now assuming again that risk free rate is six percent equity risk premium that beta of debt zero so like we said our kd can be likened to our rf not always where we are given the cost of borrowing um we might as well just stick to it now the question says um calculate an appropriate cost of capital for the pharmaceutical business of the company assuming that the company wishes to maintain its um, existing gearing of debt, 70% uh, debt, oh, sorry, 70% equity and 30% um, uh, debt. So, this is a typical example of having an organization operating in two completely different um, areas. So this is an extension to um, the basic example we have looked at. So your starting point will probably to have an overall picture of where we're coming from as in if we look at the overall, which is 100%, then it says the pharmaceutical business forms 60 percent and then um, the real estate component forms um, 40 percent of it and what we do have here is we are told that equity beta in this industry on the average is 1.2 and then a gearing by market values 50 percent um equity 50 percent debt all right and then we also have overall equity beta to be 1.4 so we know that if equity beta then it means that it should reflect the overall risk profile or the average um weighted average uh risk profile of uh, the two business uh, areas so how do we work this out now an easier way to work this out or the sensible way to, uh, is to find the overall asset beta so we're going to strip all of them so call it if i have overall asset beta which is my ba then it should be equal to asset beta of the pharmaceutical business and then again plus 
asset beta of um, the real estate uh, business. Now, you notice that because we have an existing gearing of 30% um, debt, 70%, we can actually arrive at this through ungearing. So what we learned from the previous one, we can ungear or degear to arrive at this. And then again, we can also what? Ungear this. Knowing that this is 100%, knowing that um, the overall situation is 100%, and 60% here, we will now have a comfortable equation to work with. So, without wasting much time, and gearing this, we can have the asset beta, just for the sake of reminding of what we did previously, is to have this to be 1.4 times a 70 over another 70, 30, into um, 0 0.7 and that asset beta comes to 1.08 okay of course this is what we don't know which we know as 60 percent of the business but then again working at this 1.2 this time 50 over 50 plus 50 into 0.7 would give us um, 0 0.71. And that is the asset beta. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is 100% plus asset beta of the pharmaceutical business or component, which we know is 60 percent but then we don't know what it is and this coming up as 40 percent we are now in the position to work out that bit here which is missing okay so this is a straightforward um, algebra which i believe most of us should be conversant with so then it means that the asset beta equation of or value of this the pharmaceutical uh, aspect of the business will simply be um, of course this bit here works out nicely to be 0 0.284. 0 0.284 will simply be 1.08, which is the 100% bit. Don't know why this pen is playing up. Um, minus 0 0.2. 84 all of this divided by the 60 percent and that of course gives us the 1.33 and so this 1.33 represents the asset beta of the pharmaceutical industry oh so what the question is asking us to calculate the appropriate cost of capital, which is essentially the work in this case, then what do we need? We will need a geared asset beta. So once again, the ultimate thing we are looking for, for the pharmaceutical business, is to have a work 
or call it a cost of capital, which works out to be a cost of equity we are yet to find times 70%, again, 6% after tax times 30%. What we have, what we need, again, using the capital asset pricing model, this time, this KE is the risk-free rate, equity risk premium, but very again, I need a beta equity, and this is an asset beta. We have a problem. So, what can we do? I'm going to re-gear this. Once I'm told that this one point of this organization is not going to change its capital structure, then I'm going to re-gear. So you look up here and say, I'm going to re-gear the 1.33 to reflect the 30, 70 capital structure. All right. So that is it. And so with this, from the formula we learned, rate gearing, equity beta will now be this 1.33 we already know. And then it's going to be 70 plus 30.7 by 70. And that gives us a 1.73. Oh, this 1.73 here, it should be this bit here. So we are pretty much ready to go with 1.73. So if we have 1.73 being this, then our cost of equity is 6%, 8% times this 1.73, which gives us 19.84 percent all right ready to go the work is now in position we have the appropriate cost of capital the appropriate risk adjusted cost of capital for the pharmaceutical bit of the business, that cost of capital or the work for that matter will be this 19.84% we have. We wish to maintain that cost of borrowing assumed to be six and of course 30%. And when it's all said and done, we're coming to about 15%. All right. So that is what brings us to the end of the session where we wish to maintain our capital structure, but then we are looking at diversifying our operations into another industry completely different. We violate the first rule of using our existing work. So where an organization is looking at diversifying its operations into um, a new business area, completely different from existing operations, then it is important that there is risk or the new business risk is reflected in the cost of capital. And these are the ways by which um, I would imagine um, a, a good student at this level should be able to work uh, this out. Um, our next um, bit that we'll be talking about in our next video will be where 
the gearing or by the method of funding the new project, the gearing of or the original gearing will be altered. What do we do? And what is the technique for working this out? Thank you for watching this.